Okay, in this video, we're gonna go over the correlation method using uh, rapid minor and R uh, in this chapter. Okay, so let us first go into some uh, simple concepts that maybe you are familiar with in the past. If not, at least you get some type of revision. So here is some example about uh, correlation. Here's the question. Uh, does customer satisfaction change based on time of a year? Does the amount of rainfall change the price of a crop? Does household income influence which restaurants a person patronizes? The answer to each of these questions is probably yes. Not only can correlation help us know if that is true, but it can also help us learn how strongly the interactions are when and if they occur. So whenever you find yourself asking how certain factors in a problem you are trying to solve interact with one another, consider building a correlation matrix to find out what type of relationships you have in your attributes. So what is correlation? Correlation is a relatively simple statistical analysis tool used to measure how strong a relationship is between each possible set of attributes in a data set through the use of correlation coefficients. We do not infer causation using correlation metrics, nor do we use correlation coefficients to predict one attribute's value based on another's. So pay attention to that. But correlation can help us find general trends in data sets, and we can anticipate how strongly an observed movement in one attribute will occur in conjunction with movement in another. So here is our uh, business case study, uh, which we have data uh, associated uh, with it. And we're gonna use the uh, modeling of uh, correlation to help us understand uh, this business problem. So Sarah is a regional sales manager for, a nation, na for the nationwide suppliers of fossil fuels for home heating. So this is what she sells. Uh, she sells uh, a heating unit that are based on uh, fossil fuels. So she observed by looking at her data that recently there was some type of unpredictability in the market prices for heating oil, especially coupled with a wide variety in the size of each order for home heating oil. So she, that really made her concerned somehow. So she feels that she might be able to use some type of modeling techniques to help her understand the types of behaviors and factors that may influence the demand for heating oil in a domestic market. We go again uh, to the CRISP model, the data mining CRISP model. As we said before, that this is the framework for every single project we're gonna do. So you have to go through every single uh, step uh, of uh, the CRISP model. First, you need to understand what kind of business or problem you are having here. Uh, so what we are trying to do to help Sarah figure out uh, this variability in the market uh, and the selling of the heating oils. Number two, then we're going to go to her data and try to understand uh, her data. And then uh, we are going to do the data preparation. Uh, if there are missing data uh, or if there are some inconsistency in the data. Then we start the modeling, and here we're gonna use correlation as a modeling method for this project. After that, you're gonna evaluate the results and you're gonna uh, deploy, which means you're gonna advise Sarah to do something with this data and she's gonna do some actions regarding uh, her customers. Okay, so we start, as we said, the business understanding first. We know what uh, Sarah wants. All she's trying to do is she wants us to figure out what type of factors are related to heating oil usage. 
and how might she use a knowledge of such factors to better manage her inventory and anticipate demand so this is really important because you you don't want uh, if you're uh, in her position you don't want to be under uh, uh, right you, you know your inventory is uh, not uh, uh, having enough unit to fulfill the demand uh, the rush of demand in the area so somehow she needs to have a predictive model in future uh, that we will help her in uh, to find uh, what the uh, approximate or the average number of hidden units she should keep in her inventory beside that uh, also you don't want uh, to have more than what is needed uh, because you are losing uh, by buying some of those units and just stack them in the inventory uh, where the prices of those units drops over time we know that so so this is our understanding of the problem that we're going to look at the data, we're going to try to find if there are some patterns and accordingly we are going to make a recommendation. First of all, whenever you have uh, data, you have to look at what is called the dictionary of the data, understand each attribute in this data. So if you downloaded the data from Blackboard, uh, so if you didn't go ahead and download the data uh, it's good to start uh, by looking at those attributes in the data okay so it's chapter four data set uh, we're gonna open it with excel just temporary to show you what kind of uh, attributes we have in this data is all, all always is good if you know that the data is not so big to look at the data so i'm gonna select the first row by using the uh the, if you are on pc you have to use the sh control or the shift with the arrows right and down to select all the data insert the table yes my table has a header and that's what we have over here so we have uh, about one, two, three, four, five, six type of attributes. Uh, the first one is the insulation rating. We have to question what the meaning of six and ten. What you know uh, is ten that means has higher or lower. So we'll see the data dictionary will give us answers to those questions. Outdoor temperature again, what that mean? Uh, the number of occupants, how many people live in this house? Uh, that purchased heating oil from her historically so this was our historical data uh, of customers uh, let's say last year the home age how old the house is the size of the house and how many heating oil being purchased uh, or used uh, the same concept uh, by that specific individual house okay so now at least we saw the data now we have to understand better what each type of those attributes is and what the meaning of the variables or the range of the values inside each one of them so for here for example the insulation is telling you it's ranging 1 to 10 where 10 is an excellent insulation so now we know that 1 is the poorest and 10 is the highest the outdoor temperature, this is just the average outdoor ambient temperature at the time when uh, someone came and took all this data about that specific individual house, okay? Not over the year, it's that specific time. Uh, number three is number of occupants. That's obvious how many people lived in it. The home age also is the age of the home in years. Uh, the size is the square feet uh, measured and the heating oil. The, how many uh, units uh, of heating oil purchased by the owner of each individual house. So each row of these, okay, so you can imagine the following. Each row is one house. So uh, each house has six attributes that we're going to look at and see if there's any association or correlation between them uh, to come up with some conclusion. Okay, so now we understand our data and the uh, next step will be data preparation. So we're going to bring our data into RapidMiner 
And this data is a cover separated value, which means uh, the cover is separating every attribute in this data. Uh, I'm going to create another uh, video you need to watch, which is the type of uh, data that you might encounter in uh, most popular uh, and what kind of databases also that you can use in conjunction with RapidMimer and R. So here you see that, uh, and I'm going to do the practical part in a couple of minutes, but that's how you can bring the data. So all you have to do is you're going to bring an operator called read CSV. Uh, from the window under the operators into your uh, process uh, screen, the white screen where you design your project. And then you click the output, uh, 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 you select the output uh, of the operator and you link it to the results uh, in this end. And when you run the project, you will be able to see what kind of result you have. And we're going to go over these in a second. So if you do that, in Rapid Miner is going to generate for you the following output. Uh, and uh, in that output, uh, it's good to note that it's going to add a uh, number, rows number, just to tell you how many data sets you have. And at the bottom, you can see here, it's telling you you have about 1,218 examples. In our case, those represent houses. So we have 12. 118 houses and we have six regular attributes which are those you see over here okay this is added so it's not important just this is a number to show uh, each row in this data okay we can go rapid minor besides looking at the data clicking on the statistics that can pull for us all the information for each attribute if there are missing data as you can see here we don't have missing data and it's good also to see if there are some inconsistency uh, but uh, this project i'm not going to ask you to do this because i know for sure there is no inconsistency there's no errors in typing the entries of this data Okay, so for the, as you can see here, all the attributes types are integer numerical values. Uh, so that's why the statistic you can see now, you can get the minimum, maximum, the average. And if you click on any one of those, you should see it also the standard deviation and the, plot, the, hist the histogram of each attribute. Okay, so this is what uh, we just mentioned. It's good to look at the histograms of every attribute to see if there are uh, some type of skewness. And uh, if you have skewness, if you remember in statistics, you needed to solve that problem before going into uh, doing any conclusion. But in our case here, in this data mining course, we're not gonna go into those steps. So now you're gonna start modeling. Uh, and here are some uh, important aspects of correlations from your previous courses and uh, just a quick review. Uh, so, so in general, uh, the correlation ranges between minus one and one. So negative one to uh, positive one, that's the range. So when you have a correlation uh, in the area of like zero and a little bit maybe uh, small value 0 0.2 or minus 0 0.2 very very small values that mean almost you don't have a correlation between attributes the higher this number goes up in positive and in negative the more correlation between attributes you have so you would love to see something like very strong correlation 0 0.8 to 1 or minus 1 uh, to, uh, to from the Okay, 0 0.8, uh, negative 0.8 to negative 1. Uh, those are very strong. And this uh, goes weaker and weaker as the values are uh, going uh, lower. So you can imagine that this is uh, your starting point. If you go in positive, the more higher you go in the positive, the better the correlation between those two attributes you are investigating. And at the same time, if it goes in the negative directions, the higher the better. Okay, so correlation coefficients tell us not only that there is a relationship between attributes, but also about the strengths of this correlation between them. The, okay, you can 
uh, make sure the existence of a statistical correlation does not approve causation. So uh, there are some links I want you to go and take a look at and uh, just uh, investigate further if you forgot from your stats what that means uh, really. Okay, how we can uh, bring the correlation coefficients in rapid model? You have an operator called correlation matrix. Just to bring it from under the operators, link it to your data. And make sure when you take the output of the examples to the results also to connect the mat, which is uh, the short uh, abbreviation for the matrix co uh, co coefficient for the coefficients for the correlation matrix to the result as well. So if you run rapid minor after doing this, you will see the following table. Uh, and as you can see, the, uh, it's, the correlation coefficients shows you that it's measured the strengths of the relationship between each possible set of attributes in this data. Uh, so the diagonal over here is one because as if you are uh, comparing the same attribute to itself is meaningless, but uh, that's what it means. Uh, so of course you can have uh, one to the highest correlation between the attributes and itself. What we care more about is to look at the correlation between two different attributes. So in our case here, uh, for example, uh, the darker uh, color, uh, that means the higher the correlation. So if you look at the darkness, this comes uh, the highest so far in this table, as I can see. Uh, so you have between heating oil used and the age of the home, you have a positive uh, correlation of a value uh, 0.848, which is you know almost 85. Uh, uh, 0.85, which means there is a very high correlation between uh, the house, if the house is older, the more, which is positive, that means the same duration, the, the more heating oil used in this house. Okay. Now, you have to pay attention, some of those correlations are high, like this one here, negative uh, 0.794 between insulation rating and outdoor temperature. Uh, so you have to remember the meaning of outdoor temperature, it was taken one time at that specific day, and it's telling you that it is uh, uh, you know, negative correlation, but very high between the temperature outside and the insulation rating of that house. So maybe that will not make sense to you, what's the relationship between them, or also between the temperature of the house at that specific day and how old the house is, also is a, a negative, but it's, it's a, it, you know, it's a good uh, correlation. Also, it doesn't make sense. So you pay attention to those concepts that uh, the correlation, uh, it only shows the relationship between attribute, but also uh, you have to make uh, sure that those two attributes uh, make sense to you to be related to each other or not. Okay, so yes, we have six columns, six rows, and uh, it varies from one to positive one to negative one. And uh, what else is what we say? So those keep in mind the following that when they are, uh, you have two uh, variables and the correlation between them is positive, that means both of them either are uh, going in the, in the same direction, either positively or negatively. Like you can say the following, if the heating oil use rises, insulation rating also rises. Uh, it could be heating oil use falls, insulation rating also falls. So, but they are in the same direction, that, that's why you can see uh, that uh, it is a positive relationship. That's why we have the plus sign there. However, when you have a relationship that one of the attributes goes in one direction increases and the other decreases, like the temperature rises and insulation rating is falling, and the same opposite way here, uh, you might get a good uh, a or very strong correlation between those two attributes. However, the relationship is in different directions. Here, where you get the negative. Um, a negative positive doesn't mean anything for us. All it means the association between them is one goes up and go, one goes down. If it's negative, uh, otherwise both of them the same directions will be positive. Okay. 
So let us evaluate this. So uh, if you are trying to look with the color coding that Rapid Miner help you to see, the darker shade, <coughs> it means that you have a stronger correlation. Uh, so for example, it's important to recognize that there are only general guidelines. It's not hard and fast rules to, to come up with those correlations. Uh, you need to interpret them before you make your conclusions. So correlation uh, coefficient around, for example, uh, point uh, uh, two does show some interaction between attributes, even if it's not statistically significant, because sometimes you might not get more than that in the whole table. Maybe the biggest one would be point uh, two. So what do you do? You, there are uh, there are some type of statistical significance among them, but it's really weak. This is how we're gonna put it. Uh, so here is a summary of our findings. So I highlighted uh, the the highest one right for you here. Uh, as we can see, the two most strongly correlated attributes are the heating oil used and the home age, with coefficient of positive 0.848. Okay. So our first finding would be as the average age, so can, you can come up with your conclusion, as the average age of a home increases, so too does the heating oil usage in that home. That makes sense. Uh, so what we do not know is why that occurs. So correlation will not help us tell us why this is happening. It just give us the, uh, the relationship, just state the relationship, but not the reason behind it. Okay, another thing that I just mentioned before, the causality. So the assumption that correlation proves causation is dangerous and often false, and a lot of students make that mistake, so pay attention. You're not gonna say uh, that uh, the, uh, for example here, uh, the, the home age causing the the more use of the heating oil. You need to do a lot of more uh, experiments to come up with that conclusion. Correlation only will tell you that there is a relationship. That's all. Uh, another thing, um, what do you think about the following? How about the correlation coefficient between home age and outdoor temperature? Uh, the one highlighted in red here, as you can see, the intersection the same value is listed twice. So you can imagine this is the diagonal of the one. Everything on top is repeated in the lower uh, triangle. So, so let us pick this one. The outer temperature was homage. So the intersection between those two, this is the cor correlation between them. It's high, it's considered high, good correlation. Uh, but does it make sense to you that uh, there is a, a negative correlation between home age and outdoor temperature. Uh, so could the average age of a home have any effect on the home's average outdoor temperature? That's my question to you. Do you think that reasonable to even ask that question? So of course not. Uh, so yes, the coefficient uh, correlation metrics give you those results, but some of them you cannot interpret because they are meaningless. There's no logic reason uh, to even uh, to consider. Okay, uh, so what else? Uh, let us, another warning I give you here, uh, a lot of students make the following assumption saying that um, instead of stating the value of the correlation, they will say there is, uh, okay, if, uh, if there is a correlation coefficient of value 0.776 between two attributes, that is an indication that uh, there is 77.6% shared variability between those two attributes. This is not correct. Percentage is not used with correlation. So make sure not to make that mistake in your analysis or in your assignments. Okay, so now the time of deployment, so this assignment, we are going into the whole stages. So what do you think that uh, Sarah should do or she can uh, benefit from this model that we gave her, uh, uh, the correlation model? So 
so maybe some advice would be uh, we noticed that the number of occupants did not uh, have any effect uh, on the other attributes so it may be uh, she doesn't need really to get this information uh, from the homeowners so maybe advice would be you don't need added more attribute that doesn't really help you in that specific case here over here maybe we'll advise her to drop the number of occupants uh, and maybe to further investigate the role of the home insulation since we found there is a high correlation between the heating oil usage and the insulation rating so because of that strong correlation she may uh, think about this is an opportunity for her to partner with some companies uh, that are specialized in adding insulation to existing homes so like uh, starting with some type of marketing promotion however if she wishes to continue to sell as much heating oil as she can she may feel conflicted about participating in such a campaign uh, she's selling more you know so maybe she doesn't want to hear where the ethic uh, of the data mining just jumps in uh, if you are Sarah what would you do would you uh, advise the homeowners to make sure that the insulation is uh, need to be uh, fixed at their houses or you keep selling more heating oils to them so that's a question for you Okay, so what else? Uh, you might uh, think that uh, some attributes uh, that we saw, there are some interaction with them, uh, like needed more uh, granularity, deeper level to be uh, investigated. We have this data, like she takes this data once a year. We know that uh, the winter is just one season. Uh, uh, so I believe that she should have more seasonable data. Uh, and uh, have maybe more than one time uh, analysis of this data. So maybe she might consider having day-to-day -day, uh, business uh, data of those houses and get more attributes involved. Uh, if uh, maybe if not day by day, maybe by monthly or weekly if she can, will give her better uh, model uh, about what's going on in those houses. Okay. Uh, we talked about the number of uh, occupants didn't correlate, so uh, that's what we re recommend her to do. Uh, so another question, what if Sarah had access to the number of furnaces or and the boilers in each home? That will give her a, a better instrument. Uh, so this is will be the number of instruments that consume heating oil in each home would tell an interesting story that we will add more insight about this case study. Uh, also another uh, adjustment maybe or suggestion to her knowing the number type and the quality of windows in each home would likely yield interesting insight as well. Okay, so now we we finish the whole case. We we come up with uh, some advice to Sarah, and as we said before, the data mining is not one cycle. This is continuous. So she had now we give her this advice, and it's up to her to go and start over collecting more data to get a better model in future. So always remember that the Chris model is a cycle, and uh, the maybe uh, next step will be for her each month. Uh, she gets this new order that comes uh, to her for, uh, and uh, in that case she might uh, create a new customer, sign up uh, for a uh, heating oil account for them in her data and start uh, building more uh, more deeper uh, with higher granularity level uh, of data about her, her business. Okay. Uh, so what else uh, so so as with time she might learn more about those attributes and how her data set is interacting with each other she can increase uh, our correlation model by adding not only new attributes but also new observations which means the same attribute but based on specific weekly or monthly basis okay 
so now uh, you're gonna go and do this uh, uh, with your uh, rapid miner and I'm gonna walk you through this and also I'm gonna show you how you can visualize uh, the uh, the correlation matrix in, in, in plot scattered matrix charts to help you in future use this concept with additional data and we're gonna look at the uh, implementation of R. So the second video, we're gonna go into the practical uh, part of this uh, uh, of this uh, unit. Okay. For uh, as a summary uh, from the theory part, that um, uh, remember that the coefficient uh, of the correlation matrix may be uh, low, like zero point two. That doesn't mean uh, is uh, is not statistically significant, uh, but yeah, so it is not statistically statistically significant. But there is some type of interaction between those attributes. Also, remember that correlation does not prove causation, and the assumption of correlation does not cause causation can lead to false and often dangerous interpretation of data. And finally, coefficients are not percentages. The coefficient is a proportion of shared variability between two attributes. How much the relationship between those two attributes is between minus one and one. Okay, you will have an assignment with correlation. Uh, so make sure to take a look at the uh, data dictionary. It's related to, to some cars and the uh, cylinders and the engine size and the horsepower and the uh, the weight of the car and the acceleration and the origin so make sure you're gonna build a correlation uh, matrix and tell me more about what did you find in this uh, in, in this data and you're gonna answer the following questions in that assignment will be provided for you inside your assignment Okay, so that's it for the theory part and the next one we are gonna start with the practical part.